The Honourable Malcolm Turnbull, Prime Minister of Australia, and his wife. The honor his Honourable Senator Matthias Corman, Minister for Finance of Australia. Mr. James Ree, Managing Director of the Timor Leste Cement, ladies and gentlemen. Before I begin, I would like to thank Senator Matthias Corman for the kind invitation and for the opportunity to speak about Timor Leste prospects, particularly in the mining sector. Thank you, Senator. And also, I thank Mr. Thank you, Mr. Matthias James Rees. For Thank you, Mr. James, for facilitating to be here. Friends, for a young and small country, we are blessed with generous amount of natural resources, particularly oil, to kickstart our development since the restoration of our independence. These resources have helped us secure the foundation for a sustainable and growing economy and an optimistic future. We have been cautious in managing the windfall from our natural resources, from our natural resource development, and have avoided the perils of plenty. Our mineral resources have been a blessing, not a curse, as has been the experience of many other countries. With the help of the petroleum resources, we are now on, on the on path of diversify our economy and reduce our dependency on oil. We are deeply committed to building an inclusive market economy and a brighter future for the, for, for the people. To that, to that end, there is a vision in place, a strong political will and commitment that cuts across all partisan lines coupled with an ongoing economic reform and diversification strategy, which includes legal reforms to develop a better enabling business environment along with an economic infrastructure development program. Ladies and gentlemen, to date, petroleum resources have been our most valuable commodity. Since 2006, Revenues from the mineral extraction in the Timor, -Leste, Timor Sea have helped to finance most of our expenditure and kickstart our economy. As the operation in the Timor Gap, namely in the Kitan and Bayouna fields, come to an end, we are preparing to take on, to take on an e even bigger oil field to the east, the Greater Sunrise Field. The Greater Sunrise Field can soon be developed now that Timor-Leste and Australia have agreed to a special regime for the joint development and management of the field. As you may know, our two nations reached an historic maritime boundary agreement in Copenhagen on 30th, 30th of August 2017, which not only sets a permanent maritime boundary, but also establishes the regime for governing Greater Sunrise as a share resources. The treaty was agreed in principle last month at The Hague and is expected to be signed within the coming months. The Conciliation Commission will have an ongoing role as our two states continue to engage with the Greater Sunrise Joint Venture with regard to the pathway for the development of the field. In the early days following the restoration of our independence, we signed provisional resource sharing arrangement with Australia, which guaranteed stability for commercial exploitation of resources in the Timor Sea. However, this is the first time that Timor Leste is setting our permanent maritime boundaries under anchors. Timor Leste is more united than ever as we finalize our maritime boundaries with Australia in the Timor Sea. My government has brought, brought in Minister Ajil Pereira into the cabinet to continue to finalize the negotiation and the, 
and the former Prime Minister Shanana Guzman continues in his role as our chief negotiator with the support of the Maritime Boundary Office. I am very pleased, as is the rest of the, my country, with the excellent progress that has been made between our two countries. In light of this, I would like to take this opportunity to particularly congratulate our chief negotiator, who also happens to be one of, the, one of my predecessors, Mr. Shanana Guzmão, for the wisdom in leading our team towards the outcome. In the coming months, we will see further negotiation with the operators on the best commercial option and following, and following that, the signing of the agreement by our two governments. We are optimistic for a rewarding outcome. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, our natural resources potentials are not limited to the greater sunrise gas fields. <coughs> there is more potential, some of which I would like to outline. The island of Timor was formed through the uplifting of the Australian continental shelf following its collision with the Banda Island arc. Therefore, Timor shares a lot of similarities in terms of its geolo geology with Australia. This certainty con contributes to the accumulation of both mineral and oil and gas resources. The sedimentary package in Timor, in Timor is traced back to 300 million years ago to the upper carbonif carboniferous period. Additionally, we also have both metamorphic and igneous rocks which are hosts for both metallic and non-metallic minerals. Offshore areas to the south of the island is an active petroleum province. There are numerous exploration activities happening in the Timor Sea, including a producing field, the Bayouna, and several other exploration fields. A few drilling activities is also foreseen to take its course over the next year. We also have various marginal fields that require a medium to large size company to revive their production. A successful maritime boundary negotiation between our two countries will contribute immensely to continued activity in the Timor Sea. Beyond the greater sunrise development plan, which when developed will guarantee production activity for the next few decades, there are other potential deposits waiting to be exploited and we explored and exploited. In our exclusive area alone, we have already granted exploration license to both national and international oil companies. Onshore, there are visible signs of subsurface petroleum system across the island. Over 30 oil and gas ships have been identified, sparsely distributed across the country. Traditional exploitation of these resources date back longer than the arrival of the first Europeans, the Portuguese, on the island. But conventional exploration dates back to the Japanese occupation in the early 40s. Geochemical analysts have concluded that onshore petroleum deposits vary from light to relatively heavy oil with APA, API, uh, ranging from 40 degrees to 18 degrees, respectively. Other than petroleum, there are also great potential for mining onshore for metal and non-metal minerals. Geological surveys and research have identified the existence of gypsum, sand and gravel, talc, wallastronite, phosphate, marble, limestone, kaolin, clay and bentonite, metallic mineral deposits, identified so far include manganese, copper, and gold, chromite, silver, and iron sand. There is ample evidence attesting to the distribution of this mineral across the island, and we are eager to engage mining companies to carry out further prospecting in order to determine the commercial vi viability of the deposit and extract them accordingly. We have begun to grant license to firms to start onshore extraction and other related activities. There are numerous potential sub-basins and fields onshore. 
that should attract the interest of potential investors. Our national oil company, Timorgap, is ready to partner with any serious investors in, in these ventures. In May this year, the government issued a license to an Australian company to begin mineral exploration in the southwestern region of the country. Timur Resources, a subsidiary of Australian oil and gas company, Nipin, is investing in excess of 60 million to begin oil and gas exploration through a joint venture with our national owned company, Timur Gas. Another significant investment in minerals extraction is being finalized. Timur Leste Cement, owned by one of the Western Australia's biggest private company, BCG, is developed in an area in Baukau municipality in the northeast of the country to establish a cement factory. This investment is valued at over $600 million and will extract high quality limestone deposit in the area for the next 100 years or more. When fully operational, the product is expected to be exported to Australian markets, among other potential markets. We also plan to develop the necessary infrastructure to support a petroleum industry. The plans for a supply base in the southeastern corner of the country, in Suai, and a petroleum hub in South Central Coast, Biasu, are underway. These two bases will be linked by a corridor through the southern plains of the country. The infrastructure will support the development of an onshore processing center and develop other potentials in the south of the country. Closer to the capital, the world-class port in Tibur will commence construction soon. The new international cargo terminal will contain a 630 meters two-berth facility and a container terminal capable of handling over 870,000 containers annually at full capacity. We will also overhaul our international airport in Delhi and move towards modern facility to accommodate increased demand in the medium term. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not blinded by the pro prospect of mineral extraction and ignore our other potentials. Our petroleum wealth has been a boom, a boom to kick starting our country on a strong footing and it has helped us to rebuild our country, provide basic infrastructure, adequate living standard to our people and build our institutions. Nevertheless, we are now embarking on the path to diversify our economy and slowly step away from our dependency on the petroleum sector. In the medium term, our non-oil export will focus on agriculture cash crops, including coffee, spices, and other niche products. We are also emphasizing integrated farming methods in our agriculture to achieve greater sustainability and exploit the potentials for organic products. In the long term, Timor-Leste has considerable potential to develop a profitable commercial for forestry industry. High value species such as sandalwood, teak, rosewood, and mahogany are each well suited to Timor-Leste's climate, climatic and soil condition. Forestry has the potential to also supply wood processing and financial industry to the domestic market. The fishery sectors also has significant potential to be expanded. And with these two patrol boats, we can really get the, 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 the illegal fishing boats away from our, away from our, uh, our border. Timor-Leste has recently licensed foreign investors in the maritime fishing sector. In the medium term, the government is planning to develop port and fish processing facility to capture increasing eco economic value from these natural resources. Tourism is nominated by our strategic development plan as a priority sector. The government of Timor-Leste has adopted a tourism policy and is undertaking intensive planning in, in the public sector to support growth in tourism. Besides the traditional sun, sand, 
and sea tourism, Timor Leste has great potential for niche tourism market, such as scuba diving, cultural and historical tourism, for example. The island of Atauru to the north of Dili boosts one of the most biodiversity marine uh, ecosystem in the world. The Ombai Strait between Dili and Atauru is a major migratory route for whales migrating between Pacific and Indian Ocean. Tourists will experience a truly unique experience in this region. Another region with great niche potential to do its biodiversity, its history, tradition, religion, and culture is Oikusi and Benu, a territory of Timor-Leste's main, main island. In that territory, we are embarking on an inclusive development model of agriculture and cattle raising, where an integrated system has been implemented since 2014, aiming to improve the living standards of the local community and at the same time to involve them in the development process of a social economy, always having the market as the cornerstone for development. Currently, most of our visitors come from Australia, Indonesia, Singapore, and Portugal. But we hope to drive growth in visitor numbers in the, in the medium term. The minimum target is to increase visitors from the current 50,000 a year to 200,000 a year by the year 2023-30, requiring further infrastructure development, particularly our airports. Most importantly, we are making every effort to improve ease of doing business in our country. We have started the process to streamline business activities and ensure predictability of investment return and legal protection of investments for generations to come. To that end, an easy, secure, and transparent legal regime and regulatory framework for business to operate as being developed. This encompasses the replacement of obsolete frameworks with more modern and simplified laws and regulations, such as the law on commercial companies, commercial registration, commercial licensing, and private investment law. We are also approving key commercial laws that meet international standards, such as arbitration and mediation insolvency, and laws covering secure transaction and intellectual property. In addition, my government is working to eliminate unnecessary and excessive bureaucracies that raise costs for doing business and provide inputs to the private sectors at a reasonable cost, including access to land and financial service, while streamlining import and export process and improving public service. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we have attractive investment and business opportunity in the country. I'm calling for your attention to the existing potential and attract your interest to invest in Timor-Leste, diversify our country's production, production base, and supply export markets everywhere. Timor-Leste has come a long way, and a lot has been done, but we can do it all on our own. We cannot do it all in our own. So our offer to you is this. Join us in building a free, peaceful, and prosperous nation, and in return, you will count on our support every step on the way. Thank you. Obrigado, Arif.